Okay, so this is a video that I have been wanting to make for a very long time. It was actually one of the first videos that I had planned for this channel, but I never uploaded it because of a lot of reasons. Um, first and foremost, uh, a big reason was that I wanted it to be really epic and entertaining. I wanted to go to certain locations and film it. And with the pressure of uploading a YouTube video every single week, I kind of just kept procrastinating and pushing it to the side. So I decided I'm just gonna film it um, without putting all this crazy effort into it because putting something out is better than putting something out that's perfect and then always procrastinating on it and never actually getting around to it. I've realized that since I've been on YouTube for around three years now, nobody really knows my story um, from where I started back in the day as like not having any idea of what I wanted to do with my life to becoming successful as a creative. If you want to call it that. I guess I uh, ran a successful business um, as a creative photographer, filmmaker um, for quite a few years actually. And I wanted to kind of share that story with you guys of where I started and all the mistakes that I made um, leading up to now and creating this YouTube channel. And I apologize in advance, it's probably going to be quite a long video. So uh, grab a tea or a coffee or whatever it is that you drink, um, settle in and I hope you guys enjoy. So as a kid, I was always very creative. I was really interested in creative endeavors. My first love and creative endeavor was skateboarding. I was absolutely obsessed with it and a camera, whether it was filming or taking photos was always attached to that. Um, fast forward a few years to when I was like 19, 20 years old, I really got heavily into music. I was in a few bands playing the guitar and then that eventually led to me uh, producing music. So I had a bunch of equipment, like a computer set up, much like I've got here, but with a lot more stuff going on. Um, and I would make music until the early hours of the night. And I would see people that I looked up to uh, creating music and then posting their work and like the, the process of creating that work on YouTube. And these videos really inspired me to make more music and I just loved the creative process that went into them. And I decided that I wanted to make videos just like those. And so I went out and I got myself my first ever camera. I had a camera before, but it was like my parents' um, Hi8 VHS, um, very old school camera. So I bought a digital camera. I got a Nikon D7000. And the intention of buying that camera was to create YouTube videos with it. Um, and I immediately turned on the camera and I pointed it at myself and whatever I was doing behind the computer. And I took a look at the footage and I realized how terrible it was. <laughs> and this was kind of the first moment where I was like, okay, it's not that easy. I have to actually learn how to use this camera so that I can make good videos. And so I started Googling away and I found other YouTube videos that would, you know, help me to make better videos. I figured out that I needed a different lens and that the camera setup that I was using was good, but it just needed, you know, the knowledge. It needed me to be a better filmmaker in order to create better stuff like better YouTube videos. And so I went down this rabbit hole of, I guess, learning how to use a camera. And I got better and better at making those videos. I posted one or two, I'm not sure if they're even still on the internet, um, but it really put me in kind of a different direction from making music. And at the time I had a few friends who were doing musical projects and they saw how good I was getting with the camera and they asked me to make music videos. <laughs> and so I had no idea what I was doing. And of course I grabbed my camera and I went out and I did my best job to make music videos. Um, I bought a glide cam, which was another piece of kit that um, really had a steep learning curve to it. And I began to hone my craft in making videos. So I made like 10 or 20 music videos and the whole making music was still going on in the background, but it was definitely less of a feature in my life. And the turning point really came one day when one of my really close friends, a guy that I grew up with, asked me, 
hey, um, my sister's getting married in a few months and I noticed that, you know, you're really good with the camera. Would you like to film her wedding? Because she mentioned that, you know, she'd really love to have a video and he thought it would be a good opportunity for me to jump in. And I said, yes. And I immediately went back to my computer and Googled wedding videos, how to make wedding videos. And I discovered some wedding filmmakers that were creating some really interesting and artistic work. And I thought, hey, these aren't boring. These are exciting. They're fun. And it looks like a really cool challenge. And so I spent the next few months upgrading my equipment. I was very lucky at the time where I was working for my dad. I was driving a truck and doing manual labor and I was getting paid quite well because it was actually really difficult work. And I had the ability to spend a little bit of money on the more expensive camera equipment. So a few months goes by and the wedding day rolls around. I'm super nervous. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I created a wedding video for them and they absolutely loved it. And I was like super stoked. And I was kind of addicted to that feeling of creating something special for somebody else. Now, a few weeks after that wedding video went live and they shared it around to all their friends on Facebook, one of their friends actually reached out to me and said, hey, we're getting married in a month's time and we want to hire you to make a wedding video for us and we'll pay you $500. And at that time I was like, holy crap, $500 for me to create a video. I had never been paid in any capacity to create a video before. And so for me, this was really exciting. So for that next month, I just kept learning and upgrading my equipment. I would finish a 12 hour shift at work at like 4 p.m., go to the gym, be home by like seven or eight, and then spend the next four hours on YouTube, just learning and trying to absorb as much information as I could. And then I would get like six hours sleep and then repeat the whole thing again. As I mentioned, I was working for my dad at the time and I was being paid really well. And it was a construction industry job. He had a very successful company that at one point he mentioned that I may be able to take over from him, but the work was quite soul sucking. It just, it wasn't me. Like I'm a creative at heart and I knew that I could be making a lot of money going down a different path, but instead, like in my mind, I would just rather be the starving artist forever, making a minimum wage and doing something that I enjoy versus doing something that I absolutely hate for the rest of my life. But I will say working in that company really taught me what I didn't want to do with my life. And I think it also taught me a work ethic that not a lot of people my age had access to, like working out in the hot Australian sun every single day, carrying hot pieces of metal and driving trucks around. It was a pretty brutal job, not to mention the hours. While being at university, I was sometimes racking up like 40, 50, 60 hour weeks, which was pretty crazy. And then I had all of the, the camera stuff on top of that that I was doing in the background. I was a very busy person when I was at that age and that um, stage of my life. So that second wedding eventually came around and it was a bit of a coincidence, but the photographer that was booked on the first wedding was also the photographer for this second wedding. And I think he realized in that moment, he's like, oh, I've seen this kid a couple of times. He looks like he's doing a good job. You know, he's got a bunch of gear and he approached me and what he said was, hey, I'm actually the director of photography at a company and we also do video and we're actually looking for somebody to hire to do more of the video for us. Would you be interested in that? And me being very new to it, I was very nervous, but I definitely was interested and eventually said yes to this opportunity that pretty much threw me in the deep end. They had me shooting wedding after wedding after wedding after wedding. And I think at one point I had like five in a row. So I shot one on Thursday, then the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, because I think the Monday was like a public holiday. About nine months after I started with that wedding studio, I was completely booked out with work from them and also with work from clients that I built up just from word of mouth from those two weddings that I started off with alone. And I shot so many weddings that year. I think I did around 50 or 60 in my first 12 months of becoming a wedding videographer 
photographer. And at this point, music was just something that was in the background for me, something that I would come back to later. This really became my passion. I was learning how to run a business myself, having all of these clients, but I also got to see under the hood of a much bigger studio that had a lot of photographers, they had a lot of staff, they had a physical space, and I got to see a lot of the things that they were doing really well, but also a lot of the things that they weren't doing so well. And I remember one day I got booked on a job with a photographer and he also worked for that company. And we started talking about all the things that they weren't doing so well. And we also both had this idea that one day we would start a company of our own. And the pieces just kind of clicked together that day. He was a, and still is, a very, very talented photographer. And I had a pretty good handle by this time over the video side of things. And we thought, wouldn't it be a good idea if we combined those two skills, photo and video, we already work really well together. By that point, we'd shot a couple of weddings together and we thought this would be a great opportunity to combine forces and create a company. And so Avenue Studio, our first company was born. People absolutely love the idea of having a photographer and a videographer from the same company who worked together and had the same unique vision. And within the first few months of starting this new company, we were pretty much completely booked out. We ended up having to raise our prices because too many people wanted to book us. So it was a very good problem to have. And this led us to being able to actually have a studio space and hire a studio manager, which was an absolute game changer. This person was able to run all of the meetings for us, do all of the email communication back and forth, handle our calendar, make sure we we're in the right place at the right time, as well as really focus in on the sales aspect. So the company was doing really well. And one day there was a particular couple who wanted to book me for their day, but unfortunately I had already been booked by another couple. And they actually suggested an idea where they would have somebody else film the day, somebody that I knew that I trusted, and then I would do the editing. And at first I was kind of against this idea. I thought, no, I want to have complete creative control over this whole process. But they kind of insisted. They were like, you know, even if we hire somebody else, can we still get you to edit? And I was like, look, I know somebody who's really talented. I'll have them film your day and I'll edit it for you. But I can't promise that it's going to be exactly the same quality. And they were totally okay with this. And I remember the morning of their wedding, I sent a very good friend of mine who's extremely talented to film their day. And I was filming another wedding while this wedding was happening. And I was incessantly calling the videographer and just making sure that everything was going well. And when I got the footage back, I was really, really happy. The footage was fantastic and I was able to make an edit that I was really proud of. And I remember vividly the day that that couple called me after that they had received their video and they were like screaming down the phone about how amazing it was. And that was kind of the turning point for me. And from that point forward, I decided that I would... I guess, open the company up to having other people come in and shoot for me. And so that began the expansion of our little studio into a lot more photographers. And so we hired another photographer, two more videographers, a assistant editor to handle all the editing that was coming in because of these extra weddings that we were taking on. And we eventually scaled the company to a point where we had eight full-time staff. And I think at one point it was around 20 contractors. So um, videographers and photographers that we would bring in on more of a casual basis when we needed them to film and photograph weddings. And we were very particular about the people that we brought on board. And we also made sure that if we were going to bring somebody on that they were coming to a bunch of weddings with us and we were really training them up so that no matter who you hired to photograph and document your wedding that you got a very similar experience across the board. And we kept running the company at this scale doing around 150 to 200 weddings per year um, for a number of years there. And it was a lot of fun, definitely very, very challenging managing all the people and all the moving parts. But on the whole, I think that we did a really great job and I have met some lifelong friends through that company and it was just an amazing experience overall. In the beginning, I was very, very lucky. I'm talking 
super lucky to have a business mentor who helped me, myself and my business partner get to the scale that we were with uh, a few less headaches than would have been if I had done it on my own. So I was very lucky and very appreciative to him. I learned a lot through him, but also from the sheer trial and error of just running a company day to day. Whether it was him helping me to break down some of the limiting beliefs I had around running the business or marketing and sales, as well as like even just mapping out. I remember the first activity that we did together was mapping out the customer journey. So from the point at which they contact you all the way through until they've got their product and you know, you're kind of saying goodbye, like that entire process just mapped out to extreme detail, even that itself was an absolute game changer for me. And with all that knowledge that I had accrued through running this business, I was able to run a few in-person workshops, just all about being in business as a creative. And they went really well. And there was sort of like this sense of satisfaction that I got with helping people that I hadn't experienced up to that point. And so that kind of put me full circle one day I had the idea that, you know, I should really pass on the things that I've learned from a technical sense about, you know, making videos and creating photographs, but also, you know, how to run a business on to other people. And YouTube was the perfect platform for that because I wasn't limited to, you know, where I'm situated in the world. I could reach pretty much anybody. And so full circle, just like the reason that I bought my camera in the first place to create YouTube videos, I began creating videos again. And because I was at the stage where I had a company that gave me a little bit more freedom of time, I wasn't chained to the desk having to edit or, you know, having to go out necessarily every single weekend and film a wedding, I could really control the amount of work. I was actually able to create a few YouTube videos here and there, but because of the workload of running a company full time, I wasn't as committed to it as I would have liked to have been. And then after shooting 50, 60, 70, sometimes 80 weddings a year for like eight or nine years straight, the burnout began and I immediately realized that I need to take a break from this company, just step away from it for a while and do something a little bit different. Um, otherwise I'm basically going to lose my mind. And in 2019, I made a very crucial decision, which was to actually sell my share of the business to my business partner. Up to that point, I had realized that because I'd been so focused on running this company, I hadn't had the opportunity to do a lot of things. I lost most of my weekends. I missed out on a lot of friends' birthday parties, um, special events, engagements, kids' birthday parties, things like that. And it was extremely heartbreaking for me to miss out on those things. And also, I hadn't actually traveled outside the country and just gone on a holiday. And I kind of reached a crossroads in my life where I decided that I needed to take my lifestyle more seriously. And I also wanted to move my life in a direction that was more fulfilling. And for me, it was that feeling of fulfillment in helping others through the videos that I was creating. So at the start of 2019, I decided that I was going to create a YouTube video every single week on this channel. And so far I have not created a video every single week, but I have been consistent enough where I have built up a pretty decent subscriber base. I never would have thought that I would have got this far so quickly. And I am super appreciative of everybody who's joined in this journey so far. And I just really want to continue creating YouTube videos. It's what makes me happy. And I love the fact that I'm helping a lot of people, um, as well as being able to do what I want to do, you know, um, explore different creative avenues and just create things on a daily basis. And it's also got me thinking about the other ways that I can add value for you guys, because, you know, having that experience and running a creative business has really given me a unique perspective that I think not a lot of other YouTubers have. And so what I want to do in the future is also teach that side of things, you know, the whole business side of things for people who are going down that avenue. There's a lot of people who just keep photography as a hobby, something that they do for fun. But then there's also another subset of people who want to make it their career. And I want to get behind those people and really help those people out because 
because I was very, very lucky. I'm being totally honest right now. Like I was super lucky to have my business mentor, somebody who taught me so many things and stopped me from making so many mistakes. And I want to be that person for others. So yeah, that's my plan moving forward. Nothing really is changing. However, I do really want to work on a course or something like that, that helps people get into business as a creative or to thrive as a creative in this crazy field, this crazy oversaturated market. So that is my story. Obviously, there's a lot of things that I didn't go into more detail on because I would be here for hours and hours. Um, But yeah, that is my story of basically not knowing what I wanted to do with my life to now being a full-time YouTuber, all the things that I've learned and experienced along the way. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got something out of it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.